the hard part of actually selling the deal to Congress starts now. We're still waiting to hear the final details and to see the final text. But in the meantime, I want to bring in someone who's been closely advising the president and negotiators while keeping a close eye on the impact of any deal on the economy. Lael Brainerd is President Biden's top economic advisor. She's the director of the National Economic Council. And after just a few months on the job, she's already had to deal with the near collapse and collapse of several banks in March and now a debt ceiling fight. So they're keeping you busy over there. Uh, Lael, thank you for joining me this morning. I wanted to start with some of the details that are out there. Uh, we are hearing the deal is a two-year debt limit extension, some work requirements for SNAP up to a certain age with exceptions for homeless people and veterans, protection of a lot of the priorities the president had as it relates to Medicaid, fighting the climate crisis. Uh, but are those details accurate? Is there anything you would add to that that came out of the deal that hasn't been out there yet. Well, it's nice to be here, Jen. So I think just lifting up the most important thing, we have taken the threat of catastrophic default off the table so that the president's strong economic recovery can continue. And don't forget, we've made progress, 12.6 million jobs in the last two years, unemployment at a record low uh, for black Americans and at a 50 year low for most Americans. So in terms of the agreement in principle that the president reached, it was very important to the president that uh, his uh, historic achievements on infrastructure investment, investment in semiconductors, in clean energy, in climate, all of those things protected Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, protected, protections for veterans uh, secured, and essentially a two-year budget agreement that uh, starts at the strong levels that were secured at the end of last year. Now, you have been advising the negotiating team and the president all through all of this. So just to give people a sense, you probably have not slept in a couple of weeks very much. And I wanted to just ask you about what was the hardest part and what were the last pieces? I mean, this uh, agreement on, federal, on food benefits and cuts temporary, was that the hardest part or the thing that was the hardest pill to swallow for the White House? So I would say uh, that this uh, negotiation has been uh, very uh, lengthy uh, and detailed. Uh, the president uh, asked his negotiators to stand tough on all these priority programs that have been protected. Uh, and Yes, we did uh, see that the issue of uh, some of the uh, most important programs for vulnerable Americans were on the table. As you know, the speaker's bill would have put 21 million Americans at risk of losing uh, Medicaid. Those uh, cuts are off the table entirely. There were discussions uh, on food assistance, very important to the president, that no vulnerable Americans should lose access to food assistance. So while at the end of the day, there is an increase from the age of 49 to 54 in the kinds of work requirements that already exist in food assistance, uh, which was not something that the president uh, wanted to see. On the other hand, uh, his team secured exemptions for the entire population from uh, the uh, 18 uh, to uh, the whole 55 age spectrum for veterans for people who are housing insecure, for people who have been in the foster care system. So those are new protections that will actually provide greater access to many Americans. So even though you have a deal, which was a Herculean task to get done, now it's about getting it through. Uh, the chair of the Progressive Caucus, Pramila Jayapal, uh, said in an interview this morning that you briefed her last night. She was just asked if the White House has to worry about progressive votes on this bill. Let's listen to that, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Democrats watching right now uh, at the White House, uh, your, your friend Hakeem Jeffries, others, do they still have to worry about the Progressive Caucus and whether or not your caucus yes. will support? Yes, they do. Okay, Congresswoman Jayapal, thank you yes, so much. Yes, they have to worry. Yeah. So are you confident that you are going to have the votes to get this through, this bill through the House? Yeah, so uh, as I have spoken to uh, Democratic members, including uh, Congresswoman Jayapal, of course, everyone is going to look carefully uh, at the agreement. But again, I think the most important thing uh, is that we protect the progress. This is a strong economy with good jobs for hardworking Americans and protecting those jobs, that progress, 
protecting the important programs that people depend on, I, I think at the end of the day, those are going to be the considerations that really um, lead to a strong uh, outcome for this. So one of the many parts of your very impressive background is that you were the vice chair of the Federal Reserve. I'm not going to ask you to speak for the Federal Reserve, but you do know a bit about markets. And there have been warnings that some credit agencies could downgrade the U.S., even if there is a deal. Is that something you're still concerned about and watching at this point? So by far the most important thing is the threat of default has been taken off the table. It's been taken off the table for two years. So that's very significant in terms of allowing the economy uh, to continue to make progress and to ensure that we don't see the kinds of dramatic stops, uh, drops in the stock market um, that would have really um, taken a bite out of people's retirement savings. Uh, so, no, I think right now this uh, agreement in principle, Congress uh, can move uh, and get this done on time. And that really takes uh, that kind of uh, risk off the table. So there have been some, I will call them silly conspiracy theories out there about the actual date. It was June 1st. It's June 5th. Of course, it's Treasury calculating when they can have enough money to pay their bills. Is June 5th the final date of the end here? So as you know, the uh, Secretary of the Treasury has been updating uh, Congress uh, since January, warning that uh, the date at which the government can no longer pay its obligations um, uh, may be as soon as early June. And as she got closer to the date, uh, the Secretary has been given uh, additional updates. The most recent, as you noted, says June 5th. And of course, we're getting closer and closer to that date. So the amount of certainty about her projections get stronger and stronger. That's why it's so important for Congress to act uh, to uh, pass this important uh, agreement into law. No doubt another pivotal week for you. Uh, NEC Director Lael Brainer, thank you so much for taking the time after little sleep uh, to join me here this afternoon.